Hello my dear friends, you are on the Military Summary channel and today we will discuss the situation in Ukraine on the 19th of September. Today we have a lot of very interesting updates, so let's start. And first we are going to start with our Kherson district, with this area. As you can see there are a lot of icons on this area showing like the real picture. As you can see there is a lot of fire icon, not just in Kherson district but there are also icons, fire icons in Krivorog and the one important icon we can see in Yuzhna Ukrainsk in this area. If we take a look at this town, uh, this is the town where uh, were located one of the Ukrainian power plant, another power plant. This is one in Yuzhna Ukrainsk, another one in Argadar and two power plants is located in the West Ukraine. So, uh, and according to the Ukrainian sources, the Russians attacked this area with the uh, rockets and um, uh, as you can see according to the icon this f attack was very close to the power plant there were some issues with the power plant but uh, as far as I know uh, the situation is stable uh, the Ukrainians didn't lost electricity in this area and so on furthermore the Russians continue shelling Krivorog uh, they're continuing shelling the the same uh, structures like some kind of uh, industrial zone furthermore they continue shelling uh, the uh, dam and so on and they're attacking industrial zone zones with one purposes because the Ukrainians of course they need to do something to solve the issue with the dam they need to fix it they need to reduce the level of the water in the rivers that in a skull river so that's why as I understand they use this uh, industrial zone to supply support uh, to this dam to fix uh, to fix this dam and so on so the Russians are trying to slow down the Ukrainians because they understand that and not just they understand now, uh, we understand as well that the level of the water in Gulets River is the only factor that stops the Ukrainians from uh, repeating the counter-offensive operation in the south of Ukraine. And we understand that the, that the time works in Russian favor. If we are talking about the Ukrainians in this area, uh, they continue uh, doing some preparation, they continue moving more and more forces in this area, furthermore, uh, if we are talking about, uh, let's say, the middle part from Andreevka bridgehead, the Russians didn't uh, push the Ukrainians back from this area, uh, they continue shelling and bombing this area, trying to reduce the Ukrainians as much as possible, uh, and if we are talking about this area, the main logistics center you know, for this bridgehead is Beriznigovate, this town. Uh, if we take a look at Beriznigovate and if we take a look at the Western Sources map, you're gonna see that this town Beriznigovate is located on the river and the main forces, the Ukrainians, are bringing on the uh, west side of this river there is just one bridge in this area and this bridge is under total fire control of the Russian artillery system because if we calculate the range between these areas there is just like 20 kilometers so that's why the Ukrainians according to the information I have built more than five pontoon bridges in this area just to be on the safe side and just when it's necessary they need to have like a stable communication road uh, uh, across this river to supply and support the bridgehead near Andreev uh, Belogorka laws of bridgehead in this area so they, they're preparing themselves furthermore the Ukrainians are building a lot of trenches a lot of checkpoints in this area trying to prepare let's say like safe position if they will be defeated that they need to have something to fall back and to, uh, not to allow the Russians to uh, have co effective counter-offensive operation so as we understand the Ukrainians will try to do a counter-offensive operation this bridge had trying to develop and to get deeper in Russian territory uh, today we got another important update these days we received more and more important updates from this area from the south of Kherson district there is one important difference between Russian sources map and the Western sources map if you take a look at the Western sources the Russian sources map you're gonna see that there is a very big difference and the main important difference is in town Pravda and Alexandrovka these very important towns and these towns according to the Russian sources is under Russian control and Soldatska these three towns if you take a look at the Western sources map you're gonna see that uh, Pravdin, Soldatska and Alexandrovka is under Ukrainian control but it's not like that uh, a few days ago we discussed about like failed attempt of Ukrainian to attack Pravdin they were defeated there but we need to understand understand the main reason why the Ru Ukrainians are trying to uh, take control over these towns. These towns is very important for one reason. Today we got some updates that Ukrainians collect, accumulate some forces near Chakov, near this area. 
and they have some training center there they removed a lot of forces in this area and when the ukrainians are planning to start counter-offensive operation in the middle part and in the north part uh, they will try to do some operation in the area between Nikolaev, Nikolaev and Kherson and the Ukrainians created the fourth road in counteroffensive operation. They will try to cross the sea and to attack this, uh, this area and they will try to establish control because they have boats and if we're talking about the Russians, they don't control this, uh, this, uh, this lake, this um, sea. Uh, because they don't have boats in this area and they didn't move this area furthermore more uh, a lot of russian experts uh, confirms that if ukrainians start counteroffensive push in this area and if they will be able to cross the river they will be able to take control because the russians don't have very powerful position position there uh, and the reason is that this area is very close to Achakov. As you can see, there's just 11, 14 kilometers, and it's very high risk to keep forces there. They have some uh, some forces that, but their main job is to report and alert, uh, alert, like to alert if something goes wrong in this direction. The closest Russian powerful position is somewhere here. So anyway. Uh, the Ukrainians will be, if they do massive um, marine attack, they will be able to take control over this area. And after that, they will be able to develop their offensive operation and try to cut the supply roads between Crimea and uh, Kherson. So it's uh, most of the Russian experts also are saying that it's some kind of media victory because anyway, the Ukrainians will be defeated there. But to make some noise, to make some mass, it's like the best solution. Furthermore, the Ukrainians, as we discussed, will try to attack the south, and this is the reason why the Ukrainians want to get control over Pravdina and Saldatska, and the most important over Alexandrovka, because from this town, Alexandrovka, the Ukrainians will be able to move more artillery, and from this area, it is much more, it's easier to control. Uh, the Russians on this side, so they will be able to pin down to fix the Russians and not to allow their reinforcement that the Russians are able to move in this direction that um, to block the Ukrainian offensive operation on this uh, on this land on this gr ground. Another important area direction of Ukrainian attack is in direction of Vremevka, Kostovka, Novopetrivka, Las Olgina, Ar Arkhangelska. So the Ukrainians will develop, will try to develop their offensive operation in this area. But as we can see, as we understand, the Russians can't do this because of the level uh, of the water in the river. Uh, they want, they are trying to fix the issue with the dam, with the reservoir. And as soon as they are able to fix this issue, they will start their counter-offensive operation. But because of the fact that the Russians attack this area every day, today we got another attack in this area. Uh, I suppose that they will not allow the Ukrainians to fix this issue very fast. If we're talking about in Nergadar, there are very heavy artillery duels in this area. The Ukrainians are attacking power plant without even counting and understanding about the dangerous situation in this area. The Russians like doing the same, trying to re reduce and to pin down the Ukrainian artillery uh, position in this area. If we're, uh, if we're talking about this area, about any kind of tracks, there were no such tracks in this area. Now we're moving to the Zaporozhye area. Now, furthermore, if we're talking about this area, the Russians are saying that as a result of the previous attacks in this area, uh, they calculated that the losses of the 46 uh, brigade in this area was around 15 soldiers and three armored vehicles. They didn't provide more information about the losses, so I believe that we're going to receive them tomorrow after the Russians complete their calculation. Now we are moving to the Zaporozhye area. We, uh, for now, we can split this area in two parts, the west Zaporozhye front line, this one, and the east Zaporozhye front line, uh, where the main center is Uglidar. The west one, the main center is uh, Gulei Pole and Arekhov, and the west east one is Uglidar. If we're talking the west part of the Zaporozhye front line, the Ukrainians uh, continue doing recon combats there. During the previous hours, there was like three attempts uh, of uh, recon combat in this area, but all of them, um, those attempts were failed, and the Ukrainians were defeated. But as you can see as well, there are some icons uh, showing that the Russians are attacking the territory brigades, some uh, warehouses, some ammo depots in this area and so on. And the Russians are saying that as a result of attack in this area, the Ukrainians lost around uh, one um, around 70 soldiers and four armored vehicles. Um, the only update, uh, 
about the east part of this area is about 59th uh, brigade mechanized brigade this brigade lost in this part around 80 soldiers uh, the Russians, as you can see, attacked the 102nd Territory Brigade, 128th Territory Brigade. The meat that Ukrainians were planning or are planning to send as the first wave of counteroffensive operation on the Zaporozhye region. Furthermore, the Russians are saying that they attacked an industrial zone in Zaporozhye. That was some kind of uh, plant where the Ukrainians were fixing the tanks, armored vehicles, and so on. So the Russians attacked this area, trying to reduce the uh, Ukrainian's capabilities in fixing uh, the armored vehicles. Now we are moving to Donetsk area. Today we got very bad news from Donetsk area. This morning started with artillery shelling of Donetsk district of the central part. There is a marketplace, as you can see, this is a town, some square. There is a market where the civilians are going every day to buy some products and so on. So the Ukrainians start shelling this area with 155 millimeters artillery shells, and as a result of that attack, up to 16 civilians were killed and this number includes two uh, kids from this year so the situation is critical and uh, the situation is very bad and as we can see uh, the russians can't do anything with this and they want to think that the russians are saying that uh, the ukrainians attacked this town just because of one reason because the Russians achieved some success in storming of Pervomaiska and Nivoiska. As you can see, there is like there are two uh, icons showing that the Russians have some promotion, have some success in this area, and to stop the Russians and to stop, to be more precise, to stop DPR, the Ukrainians are just shelling without aiming the central part just to slow down the Russians. Furthermore, the Rus the, Ukra the Russians are saying that Ukrainians during the previous days. All, every single day they do they did some counteroffensive operation up to five attempts of counteroffensive operation this year just with one purpose to slow down the russians because the russians uh, here uh, finally they very slowly but they penetrated slowly meter by meter the ukrainians uh, defense uh, in this area and of course um, if they are able to uh, and with help of this of course they're are able to push back the Ukrainian artillery and of course this reduced the shelling of this town. As a result of the previous battles in this area, uh, the Russians are saying that they, uh, the Ukrainian losses in this area in Donetsk region is around 200 soldiers and around 11 armored vehicles. But we're talking not about just Donetsk, it's the area from Donetsk till uh, Sever. So this front line on this for front line is a result of Russian uh, rocket attack. The Ukrainians has lo uh, lost around 200 soldiers and 11 armored vehicles. The Russians are shelling all, every single town. They uh, are shelling Seversk, Bakhmut, they are shelling Spornaya, they are shelling ba uh, Zaitsev, they are shelling Taretsk, they are shelling every single town where the Ukrainians have their headquarters or their positions. Furthermore, finally, we got more updates from the Bakhmut and Zaitsevo front line. Today, we got uh, three updates from this area. The first one was that the Russians got control over this, we can say, checkpoint. This area used to be some kind of energy facilities in this area. And the, uh, when there was no war, the uh, civilians uh, in this area used these energy facilities to support electricity all around the area. And if this morning we got report that the Russians got control over this area. Later we got uh, update that the Russians cracked finally the east part of Bakhmut. I suppose that you saw the videos of heavy shelling in this area, and now they control for hundred percent the uh, Ukrainian uh, the champagne power uh, the champagne plant in this area, and that the Russians started the um, the storm the clashes in the residential area in the east side of Bakhmut. And before I start creating this video, we got some for now unconfirmed information that the Russians entered Zaitseva, not entered that Ukrainians now are leaving Zaitseva because it became very difficult to hold this position because of the fact that the Russians got control over this um, energy facilities and this checkpoint. Furthermore, the Russians are pushing the Ukrainians from the south. So the force from Zaitseva decided to leave. And the Russians were show a few videos from the of Ukrainian prisoners of war from this area. And they were saying that Ukrainians decided to move uh, reinforcement forces, armored vehicles, ammo depots from this area in direction of Slavensk. So um, we see that 
the Ukrainians maybe decided to leave this position because of understanding of very difficult critical situation in this area and they decided to move everything they are able to move from Bakhmut in direction of Slavyansk and we understand why. Now well, let's talk about the area between Sievers, Belogorka, Sporna and this area. There are very heavy clashes there and today we got the final confirmation that Ukrainians entered Belogorovka, this town. There were a lot of video and furthermore we got update that Ukrainians now are able very easily to cross Seversky Donetsk and to move their forces in this forest. And from this forest, today we got update that some commanders, Ukrainian commanders, were trying to attack Kriminaya, but their attack were, but they were defeated and they were moved back to the force. So there was some kind of record in combat, and they're preparing the bridgehead. They're trying to accumulate forces in this forest with one purpose, maybe to split this area in two parts and to cut supply between Kriminaya and Liman area. And so now we are moving to Liman area. The, the Ukrainians are attacking all along the front line, all along the river, trying to develop their uh, position, trying to develop their bridgehead. But the Russians hold this position and they're not allowing the Ukrainians to, uh, to take more territories, to develop their expansion in this area. Liman still under the Russians, Dibrov under the Russians, Krimina under the Russians, and the towns between Rupci, Novoselovka, Drobyshevo is still under the Russians. The Ukrainians have towns in the forest where they are, can cross Seversky Danius River and they control just the towns along the river. But we'll see what's going to be next in this area. Um, now we are talking about, planning to talk about um, like Kupensk front line. Uh, today we got uh, the confirmation from the Russian side that they control the east part of Kupensk. Um, the thing is that this town is under total fire Ukrainian control, they shell this town heavily and the Russians were saying that the closest town where people can be on the safe side is very far on the on the west is somewhere in Kislivka. So this is the area where you can be on the safe side and every single area between Kislivka and Kupiansk is in, not in the gray zone. This town is under Russian control, but they are very under very heavy fire to the fire by the Ukrainians. And it's very difficult to spy and support this area. But this is the area where the Russians started using their drones uh, based on the Iranian um, drones and I believe that soon the situation is going to ch be changed here as well. Furthermore, if you remember a few days ago, I told you that Ukrainians collected a very powerful fist near Dvorechia in this area, up to 40 armed vehicles and they were planning to cross this river to cross and to attack the Russian trying to um, and take control over the north part of Kherson district of Russian controlled Kherson district but these forces were spotted by the Russians and uh, these group were entirely defeated and destroyed the Russians I suppose that in a day or two gonna provide us some information about the losses from the Ukrainian side for now we can say that there is no more danger from this area the only danger comes from Kupiansk but I believe that the Russians also are planning to fix this issue very soon because as we discussed the time time in this situation works in Russian favor and every single day means another meter of trenches another meter of fortification and so on so I believe that uh, soon the Russian the Ukrainian attempts of crossing this area will be reduced till zero if they are not able to uh, if they are not able to take anything or to develop some bridgehead because of without that uh, they will be able to leave this idea and to, to try to do something on some, on some other front lines. And now we understand why the Ukrainians decided to move their reinforcement and ammunition and everything they can from Bakhmut in direction of Slavians because they want to increase the pressure uh, in direction of Liman and they understand that they don't have much time and sooner or later uh, they will lose their time and after that they won't be able to do anything because of winter, because of cold water and because of the level of the water. If we are talking about the Russian border, uh, the Russians are saying that more and more Ukrainian forces accumulates on this area, a lot of foreign forces and of course it's not very um, nice picture because the Russians need to keep some force in this area as well. 
uh, because uh, I believe that sooner or later the Ukrainians, as soon as they understand that there is no way to cross this Askol River, they will start terror terrorize the Russian territory, sending commanders and scouts, and of course there will be a lot of casualties among civilians, among the conscripts of Russian army, so that's why they need to have something there. And now let's talk about one more time about Donetsk and about the shelling of Donetsk. As we discussed, as a result of that attack, around 16 civilians were killed, and this number includes the two uh, kids from this area. And right after that, first, uh, the LPR parliament requested the head of LPR to start a referendum of joining of Russian Federation immediately. It wasn't some kind of ask, it was a request and it was like ultimatum from the LPR parliament to the head of LPR. They, they are requesting to start referendum as fast as possible. It was not like, like let's start some in like in months or in two. It was to start as fast as possible. So that, that means if it's possible to, ha uh, to hold referendum the next weekend, they will do this the next weekend. So it was very interesting. A few hours later, we got the, the same one hour a few hours later we got almost the same update from Kherson district but in this case just the head of uh, the Kherson district requested and uh, start some conversation about referendum to join Russian Federation and after that few hours later uh, the parliament of LPR did the same ultimatum request to the head of Donetsk People's Republic to start a referendum of joining the Russian Federation immediately. And of course, we understand why are they doing this. Uh, after, anyway, let's call it like this, after Kharkiv failed, when the Russians were forced to start regrouping and re moving, uh, we know that Ukraine started some filtration process. Uh, we saw about Bucha, uh, this Bucha number two that Ukrainians are trying to show to the West countries, but uh, there are also a lot of cases of and killing civilians for the fact that they were working and cooperating with the Russians, with the Russian authorities, military authorities, and, and that's it. And now we see that Ukrainians are very active on the front line and people are uh, very afraid of this. They are scared of this situation. And if we were talking about the Kharkiv area, not um, there wasn't there weren't a lot of people who cooperated with the Russians, but anyway, all those people were or uh, they were they left this territory or they were killed or they were imprisoned and captured by the special Ukrainian forces. And we're talking about LPR 100% uh, cooperated with the Russians. So anyway, this can be some kind of genocide if the Ukrainians will be able to return control over this territory. So that's why they're afraid and they want to be on the safe side and they want to understand that we are not just LPR, we are the part of Russian Federation and now Russian Federation should protect this territory as their own land. So this is the request from these people to be on the safe side they are ready to um let's say to live with this shelling they are ready to wait when the russians will liberate this territory for them but they want to wait as a part of russian federation but not as a part of some kind of proxy governments that can be left by the russians if something goes wrong so it's like the time to make a decision like or we're doing like 100 percent involvements in this conflict or it's like just a joke we can say uh, so that's why this is the request from these two republics and if we are talking about LPR we also understand this situation because we see that the front line around Bilogorov Krimna is not stable that means that the Ukrainians do have possibilities to make some penetration breakthrough of this uh, of this front line and as you can see the distance between Lysychansk and Belogorovka less than five kilometers. So the Ukrainians are very close to the Lysychansk agglomeration, and we need to understand that a lot of people from Lysychansk started cooperation with the Russians. Anyway, they started. They start receiving some help from the Russians, salaries. They changed their passport. Somebody have already done this, and now they understand that Ukrainians are very close, and they don't want to 
repeat the same situation like in Kharkiv district. So that's why they want to be on the safe side. And this is request from locals. I believe that this request from really from the locals, not from like proxy parliament or something like this. People are very afraid, very scared, and they want to be on the safe side and they want to be on the real Russian protection at the citizens of the Russian Federation. So this is the picture, current picture for today. The situation is very critical because I believe that um, the Ukrainians are attacking all along the front line. And I understand that as soon as they will, they will fix all issues with the blood, with the Revel, level of the river with, infra, with infrastructure in this area, they will start counter-offensive operation in Kherson district, in Zaporozhye district at the same time. And there will be a very bloody battle there. And furthermore, we see that the Russians are saying yes, that they are still keep Liman, that they are on the safe side, but we understand that it also might be some kind of propaganda and, and some kind of speculation because as we see every single day, the Russians are saying the situation is under their control. But yes, at the first time they lost, um, at the beginning they lost Shurova, Stara Karavan, then they lost Dzionok. Now the Ukrainians are attacking Krimina. So situation maybe is under control, but not so perfect as the Russian shows. So that's why something needed to be changed. And the changes are coming from people. And these changes is about joining Russian Federation. So we'll see. And that's it for today. Military Summary Channel reminds you to condemn any violence in Ukraine. Thank you for watching. Subscribe to my channel. Put your likes. Join my Patreon. And have a good day. Bye-bye.